program do not necessarily reflect or represent those of the owners, management, or advertisers of Pacific Telestations, Inc. This message has been brought to you by the stations of KUAM. You're watching Buzz with Jess Luhan. Good evening, Guam. I'm Jess Luhan. Welcome to this exciting edition of The Buzz tonight. I've got, of course, uh, Attorney Levin Camacho. And how timely, uh, of course, we had uh, Mr. Uh, John uh, Oliver, actually, in his show, uh, talked about voting rights for the territories. And I tell you what, uh, welcome. Thank to you the very show. much for having me on. Let's run a little clip about okay. the, the Guam segment and then we'll talk about this, okay? Okay. Let's take a look at this. And the same voting rights restrictions apply to the residents of Guam, the Pacific Territory that unequivocally sounds the most like a Batman punch. <laughs> There is nothing not to love about Guam. It, it is a beautiful island in a strategically important location for the US military, so much so their bases currently occupy over a quarter of Guam's land. And yet, the residents of Guam have absolutely no say in general elections for their commander-in-chief, which is even harder to swallow when you consider this. According to Guam's Office of Veterans Affairs, at least one in eight adult Guamanians is a veteran among the highest percentages of all U.S. states and territories. Guam gives a quarter of its land and as much as an eighth of its people to the U.S. military. At this point, the American flag should really just be a guy from Guam waving an American flag. <laughs> and yet, due in part to their lack of full voting rights, those veterans are shamefully underserved. In 2012, Guam ranked dead last in per capita spending on medical care by the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs, or the VA. It's called the PTSD Program Locator, so it tells me here to enter my address. Five options here, but the closest one so far looks like Hawaii. It's uh, 3,803 miles, point twenty-two miles. That is disgusting. The only person who should have to travel 3,800 miles for treatment should be a Beverly Hills housewife flying to Columbia for unapproved lip injections derived from cobra venom. But, but the amazing thing is, just because Guam residents aren't allowed to vote for president doesn't mean that they don't. Guam holds a straw poll every presidential election, and their registered voter turnout is actually higher than that of the rest of America. And to misquote the words of the great philosopher Lil John, turn out for what? <laughs> that's, that's a great song. But, but just, just imagine how it must feel to have the desire to vote, but know deep down you're going to be ignored. And that was John Oliver, of course, on uh, his show last week uh, tonight. And that's exactly why Levin is here. Uh, thank you. And you're over your illness. Yeah, I'm <laughs> a little bit feeling better today. There, there you go. Actually, you joined We the People as their uh, counsel uh, to file against the federal government for Guam's voting rights. But you're a counsel for Guam's voting rights uh, uh, suit, right? Well, um, I guess the We the People project is really um, a territory-wide type of effort to challenge mm -hmm. the insular cases. Sure. Uh, one of the, the parts before the snippet you just showed from mm -hmm. the John Oliver show was um, a professor uh, Hattori at UOG actually sure, explaining sure. the insular cases. Yeah. So uh, there are lots of different projects that are going on, and, and one of them that we're going to be filing um, in the next couple of months mm -hmm, will mm -hmm. be uh, a lawsuit that challenges that precise issue of voting rights in the territories mm -hmm. wide. Mm -hmm. So uh, my, my role is basically to handle the Guam side of it, mm -hmm. and there will be Puerto Rico will be involved, uh, the Virgin Islands as well. Mm -hmm. now, now, in the We the People lawsuit, in which uh, I think it was the it was an American Samoa, I think, mm -hmm. uh, in which they were U.S. nationals, okay? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we, the people, filed a lawsuit in, in the sense that wanted to give them U.S. citizenship, right? That's right. Okay, yeah. Now, of course, the Obama administration came back and, and responded, basically, that, uh, well, territories are, are not the same as, as the 50 states, mm -hmm. and therefore they're second-class citizens, basically that's what it says. And so we're, we're going to ch we're, we're going to challenge it because they don't have the same rights as citizens do. So how do you how do you respond to to that? As well as critics will say, 
Yeah, well, okay, no problem. We got no problem if, if Guam or any other territories uh, 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 um, vote for president, but you don't pay for, uh, we don't pay for uh, federal income tax. Well, in, in, with respect to citizenship, mm -hmm. um, basically the, the cases, the insular cases talk mm -hmm. about you don't become, uh, you're not a birthright citizen. Sure. Mm -hmm. Which actually is applicable to Guam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, anyone sure. who's born on Guam is a citizen, not because of the Constitution, but because there's a statute that says mm -hmm. anyone born on Guam um, is a U.S. citizen. Sure, so sure. in that sense, we're, uh, we, we have our citizenship from the same source, which is a Congress, congressional statute, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, Congress has decided, and American Samoa, um, to a certain extent, is elected to be American nationals sure, versus sure. citizens. Now, um, with respect to, you know, we, we do get a lot of people saying, well, what about the federal taxes? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think there are really two ways to, to look at it. One is paying federal taxes has never been a condition in order to exercise your right to vote. That's right. There are lots right. of people who live in the states um, that are 18 years old, just out of high school. They are allowed to vote, even if they don't pay sure, a dime sure. towards the federal treasury. You know, and that is because the whole idea of democracy is um, you get to elect the people sure. who govern over you, consent of the government. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that requires some kind of donation sure, to the treasury. That's right. That's uh, right. And the second side of it is, it's only one. You know, they only look at that aspect of it. You know, Guam also um, has to carry out federal mandates, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but they aren't fully federally funded. That's right. Because we're a territory. That's right. So that's right. it's you know, um, EITC is one example that it's a federal mandate for us to pay it. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't come from the federal side. They, sure. they pay it up to a certain extent. Sure, sure. Uh, Medicare, Medicaid are all capped mm -hmm. because we're a territory. We would be entitled to a, a large, a much more uh, funding if we were sure. a state. So you know, um, I, I think they've done an economic analysis before whether or not the taxes that we paid federally mm -hmm. might actually match the sure. amount of benefits that we would be entitled sure. to. Now, now, what do you think our chances are? I mean, uh, I, I think uh, we have their compelling arguments already in regards to that, as, as you said in some of the, the arguments put forth that, you know, if you're if you were a U.S. citizen and you go to a foreign country, you can, you can vote basically, uh, you know, an absentee, mm -hmm. okay? But when you when you live here and you become a resident here, because I used to be able to vote for president when I was a resident in California, but when uh, when I came here and established residency here, I lost that right to vote. As a matter of fact, if Obama wants to retire and you know he says an island boy, he wants to come to a real island, he can yeah. come to Guam, he established residency here, you lose that right to vote for a, an office he once held. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that's uh, you know someone has said you you get on a plane from Hawaii and all of a sudden you hit a point where. Mm -hmm. Your right, your full rights, and the full protections sure. of the Constitution vanish. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, in, in terms of, of likelihood of success, you know, we're, we're still developing the lawsuit, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I can't really comment on whether, sure, sure, you know, sure, but, sure. but uh, what you were saying earlier, it, it's right. I mm -hmm. mean, whether or not the the law supports it, whether or not there's a hundred years of mm -hmm. Supreme Court precedents against it, yeah. um, that doesn't mean that the concerns of the 145,000 people living in Guam or the mm -hmm. millions of people living in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm to vote and yeah. to request to vote, vote mm -hmm. to participate in the election sure. the president should be heard. Yeah, and, and you know, again, it, uh, it just baffles me that here we are, we have our, our men and women are putting their, their lives on the line as we speak, you mm -hmm. know, and they're, they're out in countries, um, again, trying to establish uh, an entity where they can have the right to say, mm -hmm. to vote mm -hmm. for the government that they, that they choose. And mm -hmm. we're, we're doing that in, in other countries. Yet we have a country that we do have that right, right. but because of where we live, uh, we're discriminated uh, up, upon. Right, and, and I think that that was one of the powerful um, comments that John Oliver made was that you know it's it's basically a hypocrisy mm -hmm. that the United States can go into other countries, mm -hmm. kind of overthrow regimes, set up mm -hmm. a democracy, mm -hmm. and allow everyone to elect the government, mm -hmm. and then at the same time you have four million people living in the United States sure. who are U.S. citizens sure. that sure. don't enjoy that same type of yeah. right. Yeah. Well, well, how do we get people on board of this? Because, you know, one of the things they said, I mean, in, in the courts, and, and I've heard this argument before, that that uh, the courts won't take up this argument because this is a political issue. Mm -hmm. It's something that will, that is, is settled, something that the, the Congress, the President of the Congress will, will, will have to take up, and they would have to address this. And the courts rarely address political issue. And this is a political issue. Mm -hmm. But when you're citing constitutions as well as that, so where is the fine line that the courts look upon and says, well, we don't take these type of issues because they're political issues and it should be cited by, by elected officials versus now it really becomes a, 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 a rights issue. Uh, you know, and, and Neil Weir actually um, made a comment about, he quoted someone from Puerto Rico that says that's the catch-22. Uh -huh. If the courts kind of punt it and say it's a political question, mm -hmm. but then you look at 
in Congress, we have a non-voting representative. All the terrorists have a non-voting representative. Yeah, yeah. And we don't elect a president. Yeah. So basically, we have to go to a body to ask for change where we have no political, real political well, yeah, participation. Sure, sure. So it, it, he called it a catch-22, yeah, where yeah. he said, well, you don't have political power, go ask Congress. Well, we don't be, we're don't. we not able to vote in Congress, sure, so what, sure, are, what sure. are we supposed to do to, to make that change? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's, that status hasn't changed. I, I think it... I think it got worse, right, when the Republicans right. took over in, in regards to our, our Right, and whether position. or not, it, when, when they, and, yeah. and the second thing, too, really, you look at the Civil Rights Movement. Sure. I mean, um, the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendment were on the books for 100 years. Yeah. It wasn't actually practiced in the way, uh, until the 1960s. Yeah. So yeah. it took the courts to actually intervene on behalf of a minority group. Sure, sure. Um, in order to make sure that their voting rights were properly mm -hmm. uh, carried out and that they were treated fairly. So, there. yeah. There we go. I tell you what, we're going to pay some bills. We'll come back, talk more uh, with, of course, Attorney Levin Camacho about Guam's voting rights and that uh, lawsuit that will be coming up. Be right back. <laughs>